Welcome to YouTube, Excel Finance Trick number two. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel and click on my college website link and download the workbook, Excel Finance Tricks 1 to 17. Hey, this is number two trick, and we're on the tab called Interest and Future Value. We want to talk about simple interest and compound interest. Now, simple interest. Let's say you put 100 bucks in the bank, and they say we'll give you 10%. That means at the end of the year, they just multiply the 10% times the 100, and that's all you get. If you left it in here for many years, forget it. Every year when they paid interest, they would go to the original amount, the $100 you put in, and use the 10%. Let's see how to do this just for one year. By the way, throughout all these uh, finance tricks, when you put something in the bank, it could be either the amount loaned or the amount Owed. Now, when you put money in the bank, guess what? You're loaning it to the bank. But when you borrow money, that means you owe it. And this will always be called the present value. That means on the day you put it in the bank, how much is it worth? $100. The present value of that money is $100. All right, let's see how to calculate this, inter this interest. Simple interest equals 100 times the 10% enter. And how do we get our future value? Hey, equals this plus this right here. Boom. Now let's compare simple interest to compound interest. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Compound interest is infinitely more common. Let's just say you put money in your savings account. You probably didn't. Oh, well, maybe you didn't know this. 365 days per year, they compound interest. Here, let's look at a simple example. Let's say you put 100 bucks in the bank. They're going to give you 10%. But they tell you they're going to pay you interest 12 times a year. You love this. You like this much better than simple interest because you're going to end up with more money. Hey, but first, before we can even can figure out how much interest they pay you, we got to figure out the period interest rate. Now, here we have monthly interest rate. But this could be for any number of periods. Number of months in one year. Really, this could say number of periods in one year. Because sometimes you get paid interest twice a year, 12 times, 365. For us, it's 12. So how in the world do we get the period rate or monthly rate? Simple. Equals the annual rate or APR divided by your number of compounding periods per year. There it is, 0 0.008. Three. That is the interest rate that the bank will use at the end of each month to calculate your interest. Hey, let's figure out the interest for the first month. So at the end of the first month, after you put 100 bucks in, they're going to say equals 100 times, and that rate right there, period rate. Enter. So you're going to get 83 cents. And then how? Do, what do they do? They put that in the bank, and then they. Uh, we are going to use the keyboard shortcut for adding alt equals. That's auto sum. Uh, functions in Excel guess wrong a lot. You can see the dancing ants are dancing around the wrong cell. Simply take your cursor and highlight the right cell. So there it is, our beginning balance and our interest, 183. Here's compound interest, how it differs from simple interest. The next period, you're going to get interest on the 100 bucks plus the interest they already put in the bank. Let's do it. Equals one cell above. That means the balance from the period above times. And I'm going to click on my period rate, and I'm going to hit the F4 key once and twice. That dollar sign in front of the row reference means when I copy this formula down across the rows, it will be locked. Enter. I'm going to add these up. Alt equals. It doesn't guess right, so I'm going to highlight. Boop, boop. Hey, that's the balance uh, from the end of the first month plus our interest we got for the second month. Enter. There it is. Let's highlight both of these formulas. And whoa, wait a second. Click in this cell F2. Huh, that's a formula. Enter, F2. Oh, that's a different formula. No way. You mean you can highlight two cells but different formulas and copy them down? That noise actually does help. Oh, look at that. Let's see if it works. Let's click in the second to the last cell and F2. Oh, it got that one right. Balance from above, from the end of the period above times our rate. Enter, and then F2. Oh, there it is. Sum of the two above. So that is how compound interest works. And if you compare this, 110.47, if you compare it to your simple interest, 110, we love compound interest. Now let's see a formula to calculate the interest. Now, actually, let's go down here and calculate our formula for uh, future value. 
I already have the interest in the future value, but I'm going to look at two formulas for future value and one for the interest only. Hey, I'm going to say equals, scroll up to my 100. I'm going to click on C19. That's the beginning balance. Then I'm going to say times, and I'm going to scroll up. Hey, wait a second. I can't just click there because that will be my monthly rate. I'm actually going to scroll down here. You can see it better right here. I'm going to put in parentheses. One plus, and now I'm going to click on my period rate. There it is. Now, why in the world would you have to go one plus? I'm going to close parentheses, then we're going to have to do something else. The reason why is because one times the $100 gives us the 100, and this interest rate times the um, $100 there will give us the interest part of it. Now, that's just the basics of why this works when you do 1 plus that. But wait a second, that's still not going to work. What we really need to do to get the compound interest is raise it to the number of com number of uh, total periods. We only have one year here, so our total periods are 12. Hey, the exponent symbol is Shift 6. That's a caret. That's why Bugs Bunny is so good at exponents, caret. Scroll up and get my 12, and then Enter. And there it is. Now, another easier way to do this instead of, actually, I'm going to hit F2. See that, that formula right there? That's a very famous common uh, financial formula. Uh, lump sum amount put in. And what is the future value? All right, now let's do future value function equals FV. And what this function needs, I'm going to move this screen tip. When you see that little four-way pointing arrow, you can actually move the screen tip. It wants rate per period, number of total periods. Uh, we don't have any payments, but later we'll see how to do that. And the present value, that's the amount we put in today. And type, we'll talk about all these in great detail throughout this series. Hey, rate, the, the main thing you want to uh, make sure when you're doing financial function is that the period is the same for all of them. So rate has to be monthly period. NPER has to be total months. If we were going to use payment, it would have to be monthly payment. And present value is just the lump sum. Type, we will, we will see later when we get to PMT. That's whether you put the money in at the end or the beginning of the period. Hey, this one we're just going to use rate, NPER, and payment. The rate, I'm going to have to scroll up. And which rate am I going to use? Oh, yeah, monthly rate. And then comma. So yeah, that's how I have it so far. And now I need NPER, which is total number of periods. So I need my 12. And then comma. And I'm going to need my present value. Now I'm going to click on C19, but I'm going to scroll down here. There, there's our, our periods, uh, period, total periods, period rate, and present value. Now we've got to scroll down here because we've got to talk about cash flows. Throughout all these financial functions, we are going to talk about cash flows. When you put the money in the bank, you put $100 in the bank, uh, you say you wrote a check from a different account, or you took the cash out of your wallet. In either case, which direction is the cash going? That is right. It's going out of your wallet. All these financial functions need to know cash flow. So if you, if from your point of view, you're putting the money into the bank, it, this has to be minus, minus $100. Minus $100. That means because it's coming out of our wallet into the, the bank's wallet, in essence. If the bank was doing this from their point of view, and we'll see some great examples of this later, this would have to be positive, because when you give the bank 100 bucks, that's a positive coming into their pocket. I'm going to hit Enter. Wait a second. That is not right at all. We better edit this formula. Click on this cell and hit F2. Now, here's a great trick. When you when you do a function like this, and it's got a bunch of arguments, you got to be really careful. Now, here's one way to check it. I'm going to click on the blue one. It says rate. I'm going to click in the NPER, uh, the, the green one. It says NPER. I'm going to click in this uh, purple one, which should be present value. Ding, 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 ding. There it is. That's payment. That would be great if you had the bank could calculate that way. But no way. We skipped that argument. So we have to very carefully click right there. Watch this. We're going to type a comma. And the bold in the screen trip will go to present value, which is what we want. And that comma, comma means we get to skip that one. And sure enough, that present value is what we want. And by the way, these square uh, arguments always mean they are optional. So we don't have to type in this type one right here. Enter. And there it is. 
Now we have one last formula to create. I'm going to click in C46, which is interest paid. I'm actually going to uh, move the column width, and I'm actually going to highlight a bunch of rows and hide them because it's too hard to see all the variables. Right click, hide. And then very quickly, I'm going to type a formula here. And we're multiplying our $100 original amount times the effective interest rate. This whole part right here gives us 1 plus the effective interest rate. And then we subtract 1. And that's a way of just getting just the effective interest rate. When I hit Enter, you can see 1047. All right, we'll see you next finance trick.